All right, so the different things that you see, okay, is there's some really good stuff here uh, in terms of, I like uh, his presence in the pocket, boom, right there. It's a quick hitch. There's not a lot of movement, balance, knees bent. See the shoulders there. And so I really like some of the things from a technique standpoint, which to me is something that can always carry over. Yet you're gonna see some throws that are just a little bit um, off throughout the game. And so that, again, trying to determine, okay, what exactly is that aspect of things? So you see right here, his receiver's gotta go diving inside to catch the football. So it's not a horrible ball. I like the decision, I love the timing, quick hitch, ball's out. I'd like to see the ball on the outside shoulder here. So just little things from an accuracy standpoint that I'm still questioning with Daniels. And again, you don't see it all the time. And so that's where it gets really, really tough is, okay, why is it sometimes and not other times? Where does it come from, especially when you see some really good things from a technique standpoint? Okay, really good deep ball thrower. You know, if there's one thing that jumped off the page when I watched him is that he's a really, really good deep ball thrower. Good pace on the football, doesn't throw it too flat, gets it up, allows his guys to run under it. Here's one right here, love the read. Right, you got the safety sitting in the middle, but all of a sudden at the snap, he comes flying down, leaves the middle of the field open. So let's go get our post right here. Again, quick hitch, balls up, lay it out there, easy to track, right on the money, not really breaking stride. And you're gonna see this over and over again if you watch him throughout the season is that I really felt like just about every tape that I saw, there was a couple really, really good deep balls thrown. Okay, so again, you see, I like the pace. I like the quick hitch. Okay, another one where the ball, love to see the ball. And again, I'm not really sure what the route is. To me, this is usually what we call a stop. So they're turning and coming down to the outside. Love to see the ball on the outside shoulder. Again, not a terrible ball. It's in there, tight coverage. Just a little bit of ball placement is something that you're gonna see show up throughout. So you ask yourself, what is he from an accuracy standpoint? What is he as a passer when you see things like that show up? Okay, so here right here on this particular play, it's kind of tough because Alabama loves to play this kind of triangle here in the slot, but we've got this middle safety back here. So when we got a middle safety, what we're gonna have is we're gonna basically have what we call Double seam right here, trying to read that free safety and get a beat on him. You see his hips turned this way right now. I'd love to see him try to work to this backside right here off the safety. But you see, again, the safety flipped his hips, but he's got so much depth and turn. Um, I like the backside seam, but either way, I can see why. You know, they kind of run into each other. So you, you see, again, down the field, pretty good throw. Uh, it's tough. We never want to throw a seam ball this late, this far down the field, because obviously good athletes are going to be able to make up for it. This is usually a 18 to 22 yard throw. Get it up, get it down. Um, and so you see it. It's not a bad throw. He just had to throw it so far that the Alabama DBs are able to play catch up right here. You want to be able to hit that right there. Come back, one hitch, let it go. Don't have it. Go ahead and check it down. Again, Easier throw to me is this one here because the free safety's flying deep, but it's kind of a unique coverage look right there. But I just don't like to see late balls down the middle, even though we're close there. Those are really tough to complete. Okay. And then you see some really good things from a read standpoint. So we're going to run a go here, and then we're going to run a corner and a flat. Okay, so everybody in the NFL is going to have this concept here. And we're really trying to read the flat defender. Who is the flat defender? Okay, so you can take your pick here uh, on what exactly they're doing. If it's this man or zone, I'm not really sure. It almost looks like man out here. And then there's a defender right here that's dropping down into kind of the flat area. But you see, it's carry across the board. Okay, so we get a carry. We get a carry to the corner. We got depth here. Boom, get the ball out to your flat. Love the decision, love the timing here, being able to see the bodies dropping in, 
Not wasting any time getting into his guy. Nice seven, eight yard gain on a flat throw because it was the right decision. Defense stays back, drop it underneath. So you love the decision making. Okay, so here we go again. Fourth down. Again, bad snap. Lots of stuff happening here. Okay, but we got this right here. Like this is a ball. Put it out in front of him. Put it on him. It's fourth and one, right? You see it right here. We get this here with a good football. Ball's back behind him again. Okay, so again, just little placement things. And, and it's easy to go and, ah, just a little bit here or a little bit there. I get it. But we've already seen three or four balls that could be completions that haven't been completions because there's just a little bit of something off from an accuracy standpoint in this game. All right. No motion across. All right, so again, you're always trying to figure out what the read is on these particular plays, okay? So we're gonna run curl back here, okay? I would think that most times that's gonna be kind of a last resort because we're gonna have an influence post, an in, and a shallow, okay? But you come back and sometimes you like to see this backside safety. If he clamps on the curl back there, then maybe you got a shot down the middle. Okay, so you see the clamp right there. So now we come back to the front side. And so this one's tough um, because your shallow hasn't quite gotten there yet. So you haven't got a real good read on this defender. You're running this very, very shallow here. So you kind of have to wait for him to wrap around that defender. And then this extra defender here is able to get into the mix. So again, from a timing standpoint, I'd love to see this in be deeper because we really want to try to high low this right here where we can throw it up and over this linebacker as soon as we got to wrap it around and bring it into that next window that's where the next guy gets involved now you say maybe you know because you see kind of his eyes his eyes are kind of down the field down the field down the field maybe if he gets his eyes over here on this guy a little sooner he has a chance to anticipate and rip this around the linebacker right there now again it's going to be a tough throw right there's bodies kind of sitting in there um so this is just kind of one of those where again kind of a funky coverage because if you're looking at the backside safety to grab it and then you're going to look at this well there's another body right here maybe i don't like it but then this happens so fast all about eyes and read this is one that i would love to sit in a room and go okay what were you thinking right here Jaden, tell me what you were going through, what was going through your mind. And then going to try to make a play on the move, which, again, doesn't end up making the play here, but something that he did really, really well all year long. Oh, actually he does make it. Actually, the guy goes down and, and makes the catch right here. So nice throw on the move, making something out of nothing. But you'd love to be able to sit in the room with these guys and ask them some questions about some of these plays just to hear their thought process that's the one thing that's that's always missing when i do this is i don't get a chance to sit down with them okay this is a concept that they run a whole bunch okay so it's kind of like a post shoot or wheel and then the shallow coming underneath it okay so uh i thought he actually read this pretty well for the most part so you don't like the post safety there okay you're going to read this flat defender does he carry and then recover in to the flat but again here, here's what I'm talking about here's another one okay feet aren't set kind of tries to you know, jab it in there misses the easy shallow throw almost intercepted here and again it almost looks as if he goes post and then almost seems like maybe his eyes go back here and then he tries to recover in here to the shallow just keep it out in front of you don't like the post okay go read that flat defender he carries the shoot Eyes and feet are right there in front of the shallow, and you see it missed throw again, accuracy wise. So we've already seen that three, four times, just little accuracy things. You know, getting the football out in a position away from a defender, making sure you're leading a receiver with the football. All right, so this one right here got kind of a double post combination post 
post. Looks like they're trying to bring the over here. So it's kind of uh, read the post, get to the over concept um, on this particular play. So reading the post, we're gonna read the deep safety that's back there. So you see right here, there's really only one safety back there or at least make this safety, make sure he's backside and then see if you can beat the front side safety with the post. So right there, there's a throw to me on this particular play. You come up here, you're reading that safety, stick that post in, you gotta drive that post here in most cases down in the red zone. Then if you don't like it, we're gonna get back to our high low right here with the over and the pivot, but there's a throw right there. Seems like it's a pretty decent pocket right here. Okay, maybe settle in and maybe now the throw comes to this over that's coming here. A um, little impatient starts to take off right there, but thought he had a shot right there on the post. See it, get it out. A little bit late, leads to nothing. Okay, nice little progression here. Pure progression play, everybody runs it. Got an out in the corner. And then we're gonna work back to this end right here. So this is always hard because you just say to yourself, is he open? Okay, is this guy open right here? I think so because this guy bails, but maybe you think the linebacker's chasing to him. So this is where it's always hard to go. Well, maybe you should have thrown that one. Well, does he see it as open as I see it as open on tape? But regardless, he doesn't take it. Does a nice job of working back to number three. And you watch eyes and feet, boom. See his eyes and feet come together. So now he's lined up to make this in throw. Bang, nice job, good progression, way to work through it. You know, quickly work through it. I don't have one, I got outside leverage on two. Let me get back to number three on time. And you see it, eyes and feet working to this row. Bang, drives it, perfect. So there's some really, really good and some stuff that, that you question. Love the decision here. See it, see it pre-snap. Understand, I've got corner off right here. I'm running a hitch. Catch, watch out quickly and efficiently. Not a lot of movement. Catch the football, set, boom, ball's out. I love it, love the timing. Love him getting it out, not taking the three-step drop. Catch, shoot it. All right, so here's a very similar play again. We're going here, kind of with an in shoot shallow okay read it nicely the time before just missed the throw this time you see the body see see how his eyes and feet are out in front of this he's reading this he's seeing what's going on here in the last one he kind of let his eyes get back to the front side and his feet didn't line up now his feet and eyes are connected he sees the coverage down the field boom nice ball right on the front shoulder leading his guy to throw it like the progression like the read like the throw All right, so now we're gonna run the mesh concept. What's the mesh concept? We're gonna go flat. Then we're gonna mesh these two shallow routes right here. Everybody runs it, trying to get man-to-man -man coverage, trying to get a rub right there, going one to two, and then working back to the inside. So he gets the number one right here on a second and short. And again, where's the ball? Ball back behind, his feet, again, his feet are kind of messed up here, and he's trying to just fling the football he flings it, flings it back behind his guy, misses an opportunity, should have been an easy first down, who knows, maybe he gets all the way to the end zone, but accuracy once again. All right, and then he comes back on the next play, catch, plant, ball out, good ball right on his guy, getting a completion, so really good with this quick stuff, not wasting a lot of time, knows what he's seeing, get set, get the ball out, very compact, lined up, accurate with the throw. All right, so again, like the decision. Okay, so the decision, we've got stops here on both sides, picking a side versus an off corner out or an off cornerback. I like it, going to the right spot with the football. Now we miss again, and it looks like the timing, I, I, you know, I don't know. I don't know if the receiver goes too deep. You never know what's going on right here. It's trying to anticipate and just misses this row by four or five yards. So. Um, what I always like to do is I always like to compare 
the two runners, I mean the two receivers, okay? So you'll notice one guy's at, you know, is four yards deeper than the other guy. So this ball comes out and this ball ends up about four yards short. So I'm gonna give Jaden Daniels the benefit of the doubt going good anticipation, probably a pretty good throw. And his receiver just went deep on this because I'm trying to compare the two. Now I don't know if that's right or not, but I gotta try to figure out what exactly happened here. I like the decision making. Obviously I didn't like the throw in the end result, but don't wanna put it on the quarterback when it's not on the quarterback. All right, guess what we got? got the same play once again. I'm gonna go here with the end of the post, the shoot route, shallow route. Boom, throws it in there, right? Normally to me, this doesn't really look like a throw you're gonna make, the safety sitting there, but feels like he can beat him with the throw. Boom, nice quick drive throw. This one puts on the back shoulder. Puts it away from the defender. I'm going to give him credit for that, right? We don't know if that was exactly what he was trying to do or not, but I'm going to give him credit for it. Kiss it on the backfield shoulder, uh, away from the safety. Allows him to spin and get into the end zone. So, aggressive. I like it. Sees depth. Thinks he can fit it in there. Does fit it in there. Perfect placement. Leads to a touchdown. All right, decision again, really just one-on-one -on, -one on the outside, gets back, quick hitch, balls out, looks like it's good position. Here's the one, right? These guys inside, he's got to put the ball to the outside number here, which is what he does. This guy doesn't come up with a football, but I like the placement, keep it away from the defender. So you're already seeing throughout this game is kind of the ups and downs, the good, the bad. Uh, some throws lined up, the deep throws really, really good, and then some other throws he gets off technique-wise and misses some easy opportunities in front of him. A lot of things that I call layups. Got to make the layups. Okay, good decision right here. I like this. Sees everybody walked up, right? We're looking at decision-making. Everybody's walked up. Got a quick slant right back here to this side. Don't make the game harder than it has to be. Quick set. Get balanced. Good ball, give your guy a chance to run after catch. All right, so they had a lot of success this year running what we call an inside fade here and run the fade, okay? So they're gonna run that here, they're gonna do kind of a stutter. So we're gonna push out to five or six and then he's gonna stutter in here and then run the inside fade. Okay, I'm not a huge fan of the inside fade when this guy's in an off position, but because you're stuttering it, see if he jumps it. But if he turns and goes, then kind of work up to your next guy that's coming across the field. All right, so uh, there were times that I thought that Jaden would get stuck on some of his deeper throws and just try to force it in there. That to me is really, really good coverage right there. You don't really have a chance. He's forcing your guy out of bounds. Love to see him kind of work to the next guy because he's got a progression here, right? We got a hitch on the outside. So if the corner's off, you can take the hitch. The corner's pressed up top. So with him pressed, now we're going to look at the inside fade. If this guy turns and runs, replace it with the guy coming into his spot. A chance here to really see that progression and read through it. Instead tries to force that one down the field and really no chance because of the coverage. Okay, everybody's doing this, so I thought I'd throw it in here too. It's obviously something that Jaden can do as well. It's the RPO, read the defensive end, he comes down, pull it, and then you've got the little flat, and a lot of people are blocking this out in front. So if you make a good throw right here, you see we got 10 yards between him and the defensive back to make some hay, to do something. Bad throw, spins him around, slows him down, allows the DB to get there, and it's just a simple one, two yard gain what could have been a bigger play with a more accurate throw. All right, so again, hard to know exactly what the progression is. We gotta go here, that's dead because we got a safety back there. 
We've got a guy running down the middle of the field. We've got a shallow coming over. Then we've got an in and an under. So this to me is probably a pure progression type play. So we're looking at this go, don't have it, come to your shallow, you don't have it, you work back to your in, to your under, can always peak this one uh, as you work back that direction. If you get a middle open and this guy goes flying to the go route, you could come back quicker and peak this out and see if you have it. Okay, so we look to the right, don't have it, shallow, don't really have it, this guy's coming down. Now work across to your progression over here. There's a throw right here. If you got it, looks like he's looking this direction. That's probably the next throw for him. Again, kind of bouncing around, trying to be a playmaker. Nice job stepping up and making the play. Guy drops it again. But these are the things, processing. This is what I'm talking about. Understanding having a plan, okay? No, no, okay? Work back to your next guy. You got a good pocket right there. Looks like he's trying to, just doesn't find his guy, ends up buying some time, finding him late. Nice throw. What you wanna see guys go through more progressions um, when you're watching this college tape. That's what I wanna see with this guy, these guys. How quickly can they get through progressions and eliminate certain guys? Because that's what's gonna to have to happen. You're not gonna have this, all this extra time to stand back here and read at the next level. All right, so similar type idea here, go, corner, flat, okay, we saw this earlier, we're gonna read the flat defender here. Come back, flat defender, where's the flat defender? He's right here, see him start to sink back, good decision, throw it underneath once again. All right, I like it, I like that processing, I like seeing it. You know, sometimes we get cover two, we can say, hey, you can take a corner hole shot. What that means is, instead of waiting for this guy to get outside the numbers, knowing there's a corner sitting out there on the boundary, we can be ready to, to kind of drive it in here, drive it in this hole, um, you know, before he gets to the corner. But again, that's something that you prepare for with cover two. If you want it, you're ready to rip it right there. You don't like it, you see the corner, he falls off. Boom, just replace underneath and get what you can get. All right, double slant combination again. I like what he does on the quicks. Catch, maybe one step back to set, then we're running the double slant right here. Now we always wanna peek the inside slant first, making sure that there's nobody here in the way. So there's a chance that he could take this inside slant, you see it right there, off coverage. Uh, as long as this guy, this defensive end engages, there's a chance to hit that right now. More times than not, when we're throwing this double slant, we're really thinking the outside slant unless the inside slant just pops, which it does here. So I'm not gonna say he's wrong on the read, but he could have taken that if he wanted to. He's just holding and waiting on the other one, allowing his guy to separate. I like it. Holding on that back foot, waiting for his guy. I think this would have been a good throw. Tipped up, ball gets intercepted. It's not on him. It's just tipped at the line of scrimmage, but I like the read. He's got the separation over here. I like the footwork. Just bad luck here, tipping the ball up in the air and getting intercepted. All right, so this is the play that he gets knocked out of the game on, that high hit. Okay, I like the decision. Doesn't really have a whole lot here. Okay, we got a middle safety. So we got a guy going to the middle here who ends up coming open because this safety jumps down on this right here but this is again the kind of the play of the hitch inside fade and then work to your over on that side he decides to take the inside fade as he gets popped puts the ball up there a little bit short on the ball not bad though his receiver could have adjusted i think a little bit better to the outside on this one but that was the end of the day for Jaden daniels so as we dive in here All right, so we've talked about him being a good deep ball thrower, but again, processing. All right, so we're gonna have the deep post up here on the top, and we're gonna have the over route here, and then the shallow. So this is a play that I call shove, stands for a shallow, 
and an over, and the post is attached to the other side. And so we've got a three deep here. So one, two, three deep look right here. And so obviously the post would not be good with this middle safety sitting here. So what we do when we come out on this particular play is we're gonna peek that middle safety first. If that middle safety jumps the over, then we take our shot at the post. If he does his job and drops deep, then we read the high low over here between the shallow and the over, okay? So eyes on the post, right? You see right there. See how he turns and flattens as if he's going to go cover the over. Great read here by Jaden Daniels. The big time throw up over the top. Again, a good ball right there. Got to be caught, right? Again, he has to extend a little bit, but run through that and make that catch. That's a good deep ball right there. All right, so again, ball gets knocked down. Not just looking at results, but I'm going to run a play here. Hook, hook. Looks like a hitch out here. And so again, processing, okay? Bringing pressure right here. We're going to pick it up. You're going to run this safety back to cover two. And there's a huge void here for the number two spot, right? So we pick it up. Boom, good read. This is what I'm looking for, right? Body in here, body out there get the ball out on time to this guy. It's exactly where he's throwing the football. It actually gets knocked down right here, but I like the processing and what he's seeing and where he's going with the football. All right, now I would always read this differently. It looks as if LSU is going to read this inside out. I always read this outside in because I think the most pressure you can put on a defender is this guy right here. He's got to cover the most ground. So I always like to look at the guy who's got to cover the most ground because he gives the quickest read and he gives us the biggest advantage to be successful. So we have corner off here. You would normally get uh, an in and out here on this flat to this inside hook off of this defender depending on how fast he goes. But it looks as if Jaden Daniels and company read this inside out. Okay, so he reads it inside out. This guy's open. He's just going to put it on him. But for those quarterbacks and coaches at home, here's what I'm talking about. See how this guy's in a bind? This guy's got the most room to cover here. This backer could easily match to that. He doesn't really have pressure of two guys. The outside backer has the pressure of these two guys working against him. That's why, to me, I'm throwing this ball to the flat because I'm reading this outside in. But they read it the opposite. Good decision, good ball to the inside. Okay, so we've got, um, again, what I call a POCO concept. And again, I always like to use this stuff as teaching tape as well. So we've got a POCO concept, which is the post corner with the flat up to the top. Okay, so we're always trying to get this high low here between the corner and the flat. On the back side, we're going to run an in route. And I always like to put my underneath guy on the hook so we can get a high low on the back side too. So he happens to get cover two right here. Okay, cover two, two high safeties. This corner is playing the flat. So if you were reading out to the front side, which Jaden happens to be right here, it becomes a high low against that outside defender, that flat defender. So this is kind of tough against cover two because he holds leverage a lot longer in cover two than he would in a normal situation. So you see it right here is they actually play this pretty well to the strong side. This corner falls off. This guy actually falls off to the flat because of how long it takes the flat to get there. I would love to see him work backside, uh, kind of this high low here against cover two right now because this corner just always has a chance to bait you into making a throw because he can sit outside with width. He's waiting for you to make a throw and then break on it. Like to see him come backside against cover two, but he reads front side, doesn't have it, sees that it's covered, go make a play which is something that he did really, really well. But you see where the opportunity could be on the backside against cover two, not as many bodies back there. So that's what I would always do. See cover two, I'm gonna go right back to my high low on the backside on this particular concept. All right, so a lot of different things going on here. Some really good concepts. Uh, here, so we're going to run a corner and then we're going to have a flat, we're going to have a shallow and an in. Okay, so we get high lows really in both spots. 
Okay, this one down here on the bottom, this high low with the corner and the flat is really for cover two, which is what they get right here. So would love to see him kind of stay over here and read it. But again, one of the hardest things is when you run this out from so far away, this guy again continues to hold the width here. So you see how he holds it off and he can kind of bait you into both of these throws. You got to wait just a touch longer uh, or you got to drive this throw right in here in that kind of that cover two hole, um, you know, so you're not letting him get all the way out to the numbers. You drive it inside right here or you don't like that over to that side. You could easily work to the back side and work your high low with the end possibility for the in back side right there. You see it or even the shallow running out the back side or jump, dumping it to the back here. So lots of really good options here. Not sure uh, when you look at Jaden, it looks like he looks to the right here, but he gets off it really, really quickly and tries to get backside. And then there's some pressure that he has to slide away from. But again, making a play with the feet, taking the big hit, pay attention to at the next level, right, is being able to get down and protect the football. All right, so we talked about this concept a lot against Alabama. So it's kind of a post or an in with the wheel and then the shallow, right? So one, two, three. Did a nice job working through that in this game. Did a nice job working through it for the most part against Alabama. And right here, right, feels like he can wrap it around that backer. Boom, ball's right on the money. Love it. Love the timing. Safety's high. Wrap it around the backer. If this backer drops and takes it away, replace with the shallow. But a really good second level throw right there on the money. All right, so he threw a number of these in this game. Now, could very easily come out here and just take the hitch, right? This corner's off, take the hitch. But he gets a perfect look, so his middle closed. We get press on the inside fade, which is what we want. I don't know if he sees this, but you can see this corner out here just peeking outside. He has no idea what's going on inside of him. He's playing man-to-man -man coverage. So we get the exact look that we want for the inside fade. You see the quick throw, ball put out, away from the defender, perfect throw, good catch by the receiver to get a touchdown. Those deep throws are something that he continue to show up, that he continues to throw really, really well. All right, not really sure what they're trying to do here as he starts to roll this direction and this tackle never reaches and gets the edge. I'm not really sure if it's supposed to be a roll or if he feels the pressure and he starts to move, but they're gonna run a kind of a levels concept over here. Um, and again, don't know what's supposed to happen here, but I would love to see him kind of slide, pull up right here and hit this out. Uh, really got no chance if you don't win the edge, but just pop up real quick if you feel like there's pressure coming and just put the ball on your guy, right? He's gonna have the next level guy also, but we're running right into pressure there. So I'm not really sure what the protection is here. The tackle seems to step down, just not, not a good play right there. But if you can feel that it's going bad, I'd love to see him just anticipate, boom, ball out right now and get a completion. So those things are tough, right? It's tough to judge a guy on that because it's supposed to be a rollout. Tackle didn't do very good, didn't win. Now we're asking Jaden to do something they haven't really talked about. Um, but if he's moving because of the protection and, and they're kind of trying to attack from the backside, then he's got to be ready to boom, get the ball out of his hand. So don't have a chance to sit down and talk to him. So you're never sure what it's going to be. So I'm never a guy, right? I don't just, oh, that's a minus for Jaden Daniel. I don't do that stuff, right? I'm trying to see the big picture and give you guys a big picture on who may have been at fault, what the quarterback could have done in a situation without knowing and being in the room on exactly what they're being taught to do, okay? Love this, when he knows what he's getting, boom, ball's up, he doesn't waste a lot of time with his drop, he gets set, gets the ball out of his hands, gets completion. So many guys at the NFL level even, in the gun, they're dropping three steps from the shotgun after catching a snap to throw a quick ball, can't do it. I like that, just catch, set your feet, one step, get the ball out. Okay, so here we go, same play again, right? Bread and butter here, shallow, reading this defender. Does he get depth? Does he take away 
uh, that post or in route, work in, you hit it, boom. Quick hitch again, nice accurate throw right on the face mask of the receiver while he's getting hit. Body right there, doesn't phase him. Great throw, great play. Nice little run after catch. All right, so here's another one, kind of that same play that we saw. Hook, hook, flat. Again, I'm always reading it outside in. Don't know why they would teach him to read it inside out, but again, lots of people do it different ways, uh, especially if you, if you start your eyes over to this side, then I understand reading it back inside out because your eyes are working that direction. But if your eyes start to the right, which it looks like Jaden Daniels does here, I don't know why you don't start to the flat. Would love to have somebody explain that to me because again, corner off, corner off, there's nobody to take the flat. This next linebacker is right here, unless that corner comes flying down, just go take your flat right now. Put it on him, put it on him. Put him in a position, uh, a good ball, in a position to turn and run, and there's, this is where the big play is. These where they turn around and stop and catch it are never going to have the possibilities of getting quite as big a play as if you hit a guy on the run. So nice completion right there. We do pick up something because there's nobody in that area. But to me, read that flat first. You're right there, take it. Take it right now, put it on that flat defender, let him turn the corner, beat one guy and get a big play. But nonetheless, still becomes a good read and throw. As I said, made a living in this game on the inside fade, right? You got no help back here, no safeties back here to help. We got press across the board. You got good receivers in the slot. Good decision and another good ball. I like how he gets it up quick. Up and down, right? You're on the, whatever, inside the 15, 11 yard line. You got a quick set, get the ball up and down. Good throw again over the outside number. Okay, another one that I like here. Okay, their bread and butter play, another one of them. Inside fade with the hitch on the outside and then a stick. Okay, so I always like reading the corner first the corner falls off where he's in any position to be able to help on this inside fade, which is again, really something we want against press man more than off man. But if he falls off at all, take your hitch to the outside and then recover to your stick on the inside. Exactly what he does. Boom. Quick set, ball out. Quick set, ball out. Get it on your receiver, let him make a play. So there's two types of processing, right? It's the pre-snap processing, seeing, seeing the big picture, understanding what the possibilities are on the given play that you've got. There's the post-snap processing, okay? What do they do after the snap? Who am I reading? Where do I get my eyes? All of that stuff. So some of these plays that you're gonna see with these guys become that pre-snap processing. What do I see? Where's the weakness? How does it pertain to my, my, my play? Can I get the ball out quick and get a completion? And other times it comes after the snap and these guys having to see and react. All right, so here's another one. Kind of the play that we, we talked about before. It's a pure progression play, so it's a corner and an out, and then they're gonna bring everybody into vision, so we're gonna read one to two, three to four. Okay, they get the perfect look here for this pure progression, they get cover two. So, this is that high low that we were talking about earlier, off of that corner. Gets the corner to jump down right now, stay within five yards of the line of scrimmage, Love it, back, one quick hitch, boom, quick hitch, no wasted movement, ball right on the money, good read. These are the kind of things that you're gonna see at the next level that you're gonna have to process and throw on the next level. Okay, so here's another one, uh, same play that we saw before, hitch, fade, stick, okay? Again, with this guy turning it off, I'm probably taking one of these underneath guys because it's easy but he's got great confidence in this throw and his receivers. So you see it, he could have taken the hitch or the stick wide open, easy throws. This one's going to be much harder, but when you drop a dime on top of your guy, boom, what, what a perfect throw. Even his receiver, because that guy's off, see this is what happens. He's off, this guy doesn't get as much of a chance to squeeze this and hold the space to the sideline. So because he's off, I just gotta get around him and it continues to take him more and more and more towards the sideline, cutting down the space that a quarterback has to throw it, yet still perfect throw right in the bucket for another touchdown.
Now I got a lot of stuff going on here. I'm not sure the exact read. This guy looks like he's running a go route, maybe double post, and then we're going to run the over and maybe the flat going that direction, kind of overloading that front side. But you see the quick pressure. So just the other element, right? The quick pressure, movement, eyes down the field. Love it. Love how he flips his hips right there, right? So he's not trying to throw this on the run. Flip your hips quickly and boom, get the ball out. Beat the safety or corner who's falling off right there with the throw, but really, really well done. Eyes down the field, flip the hips, get the ball out. Good throw. All right, so I want to see these guys be able to handle pressure, right? So they're bringing pressure right here, and they end up kind of falling off and picking it up. Maybe they're supposed to pick it up, but I always want to know if these guys have a hot answer, if that's the case, because you see how quickly it breaks down because of that pressure. I'd love to see him have a place to go get the ball on the flat right now. See that extra guy coming and get it out, because you see the right guard is going to peak this way first. So it's almost as if we're blocking back here, which means this guy's hot for Jaden, Okay, that guy comes, what's your hot answer? What's your pressure plan here? Doesn't really have one. Oh, except try to bail and make a play. All right, he does just that. Creates back to the backside. Kind of dangerous throw, but makes it work off of the pressure. I've seen a lot of guys that are really athletic get to the NFL and try to have their pressure answer be their feet. And it doesn't work nearly as well at the next level. So have a plan. Always understanding your protections and where to get the football out quickly. Okay. Like this right here, it looks like we're going to get a roll down here. So if we get a roll, we're running just what I call fish. It's a hook and a flat. If we get a roll here, not a great play because this corner sitting out here for the flat. Linebacker right in here. But you'll see on the snap, this corner comes flying back, which gives us an isolation off of that backside linebacker. Boom, right there. Corner goes back. This guy's got to cover the flat. Bang, ball is out quickly. Getting it to the right guy. Love it. Let your guy turn and get that run after catch. All right, so here we see that same concept. Happens a little bit faster because we're into the short side. So we've got this high low off of the corner. Again, would love to see him take one of these. Okay, so I get it. That corner kind of settles right there. You got to make a decision here if you're a quarterback. His first thing, he's about five yards away from my out. So I'm taking the out. If he's going to drop 10 yards deep, no matter, even if he settles there, it's going to be hard to get this corner over the top. Put that ball out in front of him. Take the one underneath and force that corner to come up. Don't let him cover both of these guys. Shouldn't be able to cover both of them, and he really doesn't. He, this is the guy that's open right here. You're looking here trying to get it, but they're going to read it there, and then he's going to come to his pure progression right here. Doesn't have it. So again, I think he has a throw here, but nonetheless, he goes there to three. Doesn't have it. He goes to four. Doesn't have it. He gets all the way back here to number five to make the throw. Now, oh, sorry, I thought he made this throw outside, but okay, he works through to four. Doesn't quite get to five, but I really just like the process because you can see his eyes and feet working together. Three, four, don't have it, tuck and go. It's one of the hard things about taking a big hit again. It's one of the hard things about the pure progression is that it's tough to get back to number five. The throw there was number five for him to get all the way back there. He got through four, but then he had to take off and run, make a play. All right, so these are the things that can happen sometimes, is we fall in love because we've hit this inside fade, we've hit this inside fade, we've hit this inside fade, we've made some great plays on it. I want to see these guys read it out. I don't want to see these guys get to the point where it's like, hey, I'm just going to kind of force this deep throw up there because I want a deep throw, right? Read the corner. What are we talking about? Read the corner, okay? So here it is. We got press there. We got what we want for the inside fade. See the corner. As soon as that corner gets soft, boom, got to get the ball out there to the hitch, not try to force it in to the inside fade. He's trying to force it fade, inside fade, inside fade. I don't have it. Now I've got to go and create. And once again, does a nice job creating, but the throws out there in front of him don't want to live in the creative world at the NFL level. You want to take the layups. Layup is the hitch. Layup is the hitch. 
Layup is the hitch. And then when they take it away, now we can be special and we can create, but we don't want to have to live in that world against the best athletes in the world. Okay, so here we go again. Same play we saw in the first half. Flat, hook, hook. All right, so again, you tell me. I'm reading this flat first. I hit this flat right here. This is a huge play. They got nobody out here. Everybody else is inside the hash. Don't know why they read it inside first. Yes, the inside guy's open. So I give him a plus here because it seems like they're telling him to read it inside out based on what we've seen in this game, but I just don't know why. Put that guy out there in space on an island. He wants to get tucked inside, turn his hips to the inside. Boom, this flat route out here. Man, that's a big play right there. Now we get a nice five-yard completion. Guy's open, but just don't understand why we're reading it that way. All right, so again, what you see in so many of these tapes is same plays over and over. Same plays over and over, okay? So the pure progression, we're back to that here. Okay, so now take it, throw it, okay? You've already thrown this once in the game, right? This guy's down, here's your throw, let it go. Let it go, okay? And so, again, these are the things that I look at and, and, and just make me wonder. I want to sit in a room with Jaden and go, okay, talk to me. Talk to me why you guys read this inside out. Talk to me why you nailed this throw earlier in the game to the corner route because you got this guy to sit within five yards of the line of scrimmage. And now, here we are, same exact thing. Why didn't you nail this throw this time? Okay, and you see, okay, this is the one that he gets all the way back. So he processes back. I knew there was one in this game. So he comes back and you see it. So here's kind of three and four, kind of stacked on top of each other. Doesn't really have either one of them. He gets all the way back here to number five. So even though he missed, right, and, and see, it's hard. You get all the way back to number five. These guys are reacting by that point. Not a real big completion. But I at least like the process, right? I'd like to see him take number two here right now because he's got that throw but doesn't have it. It's nice to see his brain and his processing and his feet work together to be able to work through this and get back to number five. Okay, play that you'll see at the next level, triple slant. One, two, three, okay? So a lot of bodies over there right now. Again, never know why you run a concept like this with a back on that side. All it does is bring extra guys to the party. You got everybody coming inside. Why would you put your back to that side as well and add to the mix? I don't know. Another question to ask everybody, but our first read starts here, okay? So we wanna see if this guy squeezes, and then we go two to three out here off of the next backer, so we get a little squeeze inside, right? We get a win by number two. Again, balls out, good timing, good read. Bang, ball's right on his guy, in the window, almost another big play, but good quick read, ball out of his hands. All right, love this one. Okay, so not a great play because you're just running an out and a go and you happen to get cover two right here. So you're running right into, because you're really trying to get the out here, you're running right into a corner that's rolled. But you love the reaction here by Jaden right here. He comes out, wants this out, feels the corner coming down and he's ready to hit this whole shot and beat this safety with the whole shot here. Really well done right there to react to what that corner does and make a nice throw away from the safety. So this is the kind of stuff I'm talking about, why I really like this tape. You're seeing so many different things where he's having to see and react to what's going on down the field as opposed to just picking a guy and throwing it. All right, so, and then you wanna see some better processing at times, right? So they're gonna run, go, go, big dig, shallow. Okay, this is thrown in this window right here. Do you have the big end just outside the hash? If not, because a defender is taking it away, replace with the shallow. Replace with the shallow. There it is. Okay, now maybe, maybe, I'm gonna give him the benefit of the doubt. He goes to look at the shallow and he sees this guy kind of eye him and kind of fall off. Okay, maybe that's the case. Still think you can negotiate this guy and throw it outside of him as he goes right there, but now the pressure's getting to him, so 
I'll give him the benefit of the doubt that he was going to work underneath because this is the throw that you want right here. Just have to be able to lay this out, negotiate this underneath guy right here. Should be able to do that. All right, leads to a sack again here when there's an easy opportunity back here. One hitch, get the ball out. One hitch, get the ball out, or know where you're going to put the football and now negotiate the underneath defenders. Okay? So again, right? Just, I want to just know the why. Just the why. Okay? So we've got that same play that we've run a million times. Okay? Inside fade is for press coverage, one high safety, all of that stuff. You don't have that. Okay? You got two high safeties now. You don't have the press man. So the inside fade is gone. Okay? So now, what did we talk about? Earlier in the game, it was like start here, one, and then work to this guy, two. Okay? So the corner's off. I'm going one. This guy buzzes hard outside. I replace right back in here to number two. So we come out on this one, and there it is. There's a throw. There's number one. Right here, right now. Took it earlier in the game. Why do we not take it? on this one. So again, here we go. We're playing in the creative world, which you get away with a lot more in college than you do in the pros. And he makes a nice little play right there and gains some yards, but tell me why. Let's talk in a room, tell me what happened on this particular play. I should be reading this once you know that corner is off and hit your outside uh, hitch, taking layups. This is what I'm talking about. We gotta take the layups, make the layups. Okay, so I like this one, I like this progression. So this is uh, another one. It looks like it's supposed to be like this Poco concept again. So the high-low over here, and then they're gonna bring this shallow into it. So if you don't like what's coming uh, over here on the left-hand side, you don't like the corner route and the, the, the flat, you just recover right in here to the shallow. So it looks to me like he's looking left, doesn't like it, it's kind of bunched up over there. Boom, replaces. I love it, keep your feet there, right? Your feet and eyes are over here. So this guy's coming right into your vision. Keep him there, this is what's gonna help you to be more accurate. Go back to the Alabama game when his feet were set, way more accurate. When his feet weren't set and he was trying to throw with his body, he struggled. Here we go, feet are set, boom, put the ball right on the guy, nice little progression. And we get a great play on a shallow route because it's all about timing and understanding and who they're taking away leaves a guy open when you've got a good quality concept like that. Okay, here we go with the sprint out, throw it, throw it. All right, so again, being ready, understanding what you're seeing, understanding the process. Now this guy falls up the field a little bit more than I would like him to, but we've got to know when we come out on this concept, right, that what we're trying to do here is we're really trying to create interference for this flat guy coming out here. So I got to be ready as a quarterback to hit that right now. Got to be ready to hit it right now. Put it on him. Let that ball go. Ah, we missed that opportunity. Now, once again, what are we doing? We're in the creative world because there's really not anything else happening on this play because it's designed solely for that. Snap it. Two steps. Get it out. Should say be three steps here, but get it out of your hands. Get it to your guy and let him go.